evening. John, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening. The time is 6.06 .06 p.m. on this, the eighth day of October 2024, and I call this special meeting of the United Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. May the trustees please announce their presence. For Ricardo the Rick Dori is present. Uh, Gilbert Aguilar present. Alisa Olivares is present. Frank Castillo present. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act. <clears throat> Agenda item two, if we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Okay, agenda item three, public comments. Do we have any public comments? Uh, yes, ma'am. We have two public comments. The first uh, public comment is by Victor M. Vasquez, and he is speaking on TGC 551071A. An action regarding retention of Thompson and Horton as special counsel. Just a reminder, you have three minutes, and it must be related to the topic on the agenda. Mr. Vasquez? Yes, sir. Uh, good night. No, good evening. My name is Victor Vasquez. I'm just um, concerned about this, um, I guess, hiring another um, loan firm, but it doesn't show how much we're going to pay them. Because last time, I think they were charging almost uh, $500 an hour or something like that. So I don't know the reason why. I think with us as a taxpayer, we should know why we're going to hire this uh, loan firm. Um, I don't know that Mr. Uh, Troma and Garcia need help, but we should know why. What's the reason for that? Are we going to have somebody just stand by for no reason, get paid? I'm just concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And this next public comment is by Dianelle Martinez, and she is speaking on action regarding of Thompson and Horton LLC Council for claims made by against UIC and its employees. Uh, Ms. Martinez has three minutes. Hi, um, Danielle Martinez here. So I'm very concerned with the high attorney expenses that taxpayers are being asked to bear. US, UISD has paid more than $1 million, $1 million, $1 million, to a single law firm in one academic school year, $1 million and a total over 2.5 million in lawyer fees. Now the board is considering hiring another attorney firm, <clears throat> Thompson and Horton LLP. This is the same firm that was hired by UISD during Do Mr. David Gonzalez's trial and was paid over $200,000 in just three months. As board members, it's your responsibility to ensure that district funds are spent, are spent efficiently and effectively. The significant legal expenses raise concerns about whether taxpayer dollars are being used wisely, especially when so many other areas of the district, such as direct student support, may be underfunded. According to the board policy manual, specific power and duties, education code 11.1511A, number 11, the board shall monitor district finances to ensure that the superintendent is properly maintaining the district's financial procedures and records. Again, the district is governed, governed by a board, you all. You all, as a body, corporate shall oversee the management of the district and ensure that the superint superintendent, Mr. Cruz, Dr. Cruz, implements and monitors plans, procedures, programs, and systems to achieve appropriate, clearly defined, and desired results in the major areas of district operations. And now again, we're here with an action to hire yet another law firm. I understand that the district needs legal representation. That's a no-brainer. But who represents us? Who represents the community? You all are supposed to represent us. You all are supposed to be the liaison between the district and us. And I understand that while the board meeting is going on, you all are supposed to listen. But are you really listening to our concerns? Are you really listening? One million dollars in just one academic school year to one single law firm and 2.5 when there's kids at Elias Herrera, the football program, who are having to share locker rooms. Do you think that's right? 
The building is old. The, the speed bumps are ugly. Have you driven by there, Mr. Castillo? The speed bumps are horrible. The paint on the school is deteriorating. And you all have $1 million. Now San Isidro also. The, the traffic is ridiculous. Ridiculous. You go to other schools the same. Matias de Llano, no shade. Playgrounds are old. Come on, guys. You all are our liaison. That's why people voted you in office, to help us, to be our advocates. And yet, here we are again. You all are the ones being protected. The district is being protected. But what about us? Thank you. I just want to thank Ms. Vasquez Martinez for coming up. Um, uh, and we see your concerns, and, and we are moving forward to do um, what we have to do, right? Um, there's a lot of things that the district need that you said there's a lot of old campuses there is in my district and in every district and i can tell you that we're going to do the right thing to do that and fix that because i get a lot of calls for playgrounds for shade for everything but there's a lot of needs i know that uh, management is here with uh, engineering and there's a lot of issues with the ac there's a lot of issues moving forward in every department special education um, we're gonna see what we're gonna do to you know look into you know, better everything as we go. I know you talk about uh, the findings of, of the fees, sorry, about the uh, attorneys. Uh, just stating facts here, is that fine? Yes, sir. Um, they get paid for their work, right? There's a lot of issues. There's a lot of kids in our district. There's a lot of complaints, there's a lot of grievances. They don't just get paid just because. Um, I know they do bring a... Um, if you do a survey, we're within the means of whatever district is paying. Um, I know every board member here, you know, we don't get paid for this, but we do put our time to, to be here and work with our superintendent and support them and our attorneys and everybody that is, we're a team here. And, and I, I thank you for being here, for your concerns, and, and I, we do here, I do here, and I know other board members here as well, and we're gonna continue working on that, so thank you. Since my name was mentioned, I think it's important, yes, that we do listen. And I, I see our superintendent here. He listens as well. And I, as a board member, representing my district, District 7, he understands he needs to review some of the concerns that are expressed here today. And he will do the right thing as well. Thank you. And, and I'll just mention that I, I have a very strong preference for freedom of speech. But one thing that the First Amendment does not protect is anyone's right threaten us or anyone else in this room. That being said, I will move on. Agenda item four, items for individual consideration. Discussion and possible action regarding <coughs> approval of board resolution. Yes. Go ahead. Good evening, uh, board members, Hello, uh, Dr. Cruz, <coughs> attorneys, members of the audience. We're bringing for the board's consideration uh, discussion and possible action regarding approval of a board resolution pertaining to emergency repairs needed at Centeno Ele Elementary due to unforeseen catastrophe or emergency and delegation of authority to superintendent pursuant to Texas Education Code sections 44.031H and 44.0312. There is a resolution that the board would, would uh, approve and it's giving uh, Dr. Cruz the authority to allow us to uh, not have to follow some procurement, but I will assure you that both purchasing and our facilities department will select a, a uh, capable construction person to hopefully repair that classroom. I think you all know, are aware of what happened yes. that evening. Uh, we don't think it's going to be too expensive, but you don't know until your <coughs> architects and engineers go in there and check the structure. Yes. So this is just so that we don't have to delay going out for bids, and this would give Dr. Uh, Cruz the authority to allow this to happen. Mm -hmm. And there is, a, there is a section where he would have to come back and inform you all of the purchases made under this emergency yes. uh, resolution. And speaking to the engineer, uh, Mr. Angel, and everybody at the department, Mr. Cruz, I know this is... Um, different on the procurement, but any emergency and any, whenever there's a state of emergency, it's called for an emergency. That's, a, that's why we need to get this as soon as possible for those kids to, to be back to the classroom and to, you know, the morale that a campus to be restructured. You know, we don't, um, 
it was a, something that just happened, so you know, I you know, want to make a motion to approve. And if anybody has discussion. Um, I'll, I'll second it with discussion. Um, there was some mention on social media that the teacher, some, some alluding to the fact that maybe the teacher didn't have the supplies that she needed to teach her students and that it was a district's responsibility, which obviously it is. Uh, can you, anyone speak to that? Yes, um, all instructional materials were, were replaced uh, through the leadership of MLS on curriculum and instruction. Uh, they went in on Monday, they made sure that all the instructional supplies needed for teaching and learning uh, were made available for, our, for the teachers there. I do want to commend the administration there at Centeno Elementary as well as custodians of district operations. On Friday night when the crash did happen, it was uh, almost an immediate response. Our staff stayed there for approximately, say, until 10 a.m. the next morning, making sure that uh, the wall was adequately repaired, sealed, and there was a classroom ready for our parents or our students on Monday and parents were informed and teaching and learning was not impacted whatsoever. Yes, yes and, and just for record, I know on Monday she was ready to go back. Uh, the kids were ready and she was ready and she was there Sunday. I talked to her, I went by, she was there Sunday and, and she, she was very thankful because of uh, the support that, you know, everybody did for her. And I know she got extra supplies and that's good. You know, they're going to have for the rest of the year, but you know, the thing is just to, to make sure those kids um, are okay and feel supported. Well, that's good, Mr. Aguilar. Thank you for mentioning that yes, because it's important for the public to know that this outcry did not come from yes, the no. teacher. It may have come from other sources, but not from the teacher. Yeah, and I know I, get, I got a couple of calls saying, okay, the person that caused the accident <coughs> was he insured? It turns out that uh, there was some insurance or liability that I guess yeah. the Texas law requires normally liability. What they said, uh, they were they were asking me because normally they they hold the car or they hold it in place till the insurance come back and pays off whatever damages were done. So I don't know if that that'll that'll help the district also money wise to right. We will follow up with our insurance. risk management department and our attorneys to make sure that you know whatever adequate uh, procedures we need to follow to you know whenever you're in an accident right you know the contact people that we need to get with the insurance company. So we'll. We'll work through those things. We can follow up with the insurance carrier to see if there's any rights of subrogation. The, uh, the, the school did not shut down or anything no. like that, right? Uh, that's, no, it did not. I, don't th I didn't receive any phone calls no. at all regarding this matter. And maybe you guys did. But for me, I mean, it's a learning experience, though. Mm -hmm. We'll take it and learn from how we can handle anything that happens in our area, or in my area. At the end of the day, I think nobody got injured. Um, there was nobody there, and I think that's the positive note on this. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, was, it demonstrated how, how United comes to action, and we didn't skip a beat when it came to instruction, and um, I, I feel like the, there, was more, there was more concern outside of people who have a right to know or have an, a, a, an ability to know what's going on, more of a criticism from those who are not aware of how the district performed excellent in this circumstance. I was very <coughs> impressed. I saw the pictures, the people working all night long, our staff, I commend them. Um, I thought we did excellent. I think the community mm -hmm. should congratulate the staff of the United Independent School District, and if they don't, I will, because that was awesome. I was very impressed with the pictures that I saw and how fast everything was cleaned up. Students were there, teacher was there Monday morning, didn't skip a beat. So congratulations. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Thank you. Okay, moving on to agenda item 4B, discussion of possible action regarding approval of board resolution to approve employee compensation for emergency closure due to water <coughs> being shut off on October 4th, 2024 at Troutman Elementary. Yes, sir, Mr. Canales. Yeah, so in this case, the campus was closed down. It was shut down. Uh, not a fault of our own. Uh, the city of Laredo had issues with their water structure, which caused us not to uh, be able to provide our teaching services to our kids. So we're here today to uh, ask your permission to make sure that we pay our people, we compensate them for the day that it wasn't their fault, and that we take care of all the needs that took place. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None heard. Motion passes. Moving on, agenda item five, closed session. The time is currently 6.20 p.m. in accordance with Texas Government Code <laughs> section 551.071 and section 
551.074, the board will discuss items 5A and 5B. No action will be taken in closed session. Closed session. The board has reconvened from closed session and we are now in open session. The time is 6.29 p.m. for the record. No action was taken in closed session. Agenda item 6A, action regarding retention of Thompson and Horton, LLP, as special counsel for claims made against, by or against United ISD and its employees, agents, or representatives. Oh, yes, Madam Chair and members of the board, I would like to make a few comments on this item, uh, at least those that I can share in public. As you know, we discussed legal strategy in closed session. Uh, but this retention agreement is uh, for uh, those claims a buyer against UIC and its representatives where uh, we feel that we are conflicted out from serving as the district's counsel or advising the board due to some potential legal conflict. Uh, and, uh, you know, only for those instances, uh, you know, we're capable of doing the work for UIC, but now and then a situation may arise where there is a potential legal conflict, and this is the firm uh, that was very successful in Mr. Gonzalez's termination, as stated before. As you know, it was uh, all four uh, allegations uh, held in a very thorough written decision by an independent hearing examiner appointed by the Texas Education Agency, not the district. And there is no upfront fee or retainer or money being expended uh, upfront in this agreement. It's all hourly rate, and so if, the, if there is no need for the firm to be engaged, there won't be any charges. I don't know if anyone has any questions. My, my recommendation would be to approve the uh, as discussed in closed session. Okay, thank you for the explanation. A motion to approve? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any against? None heard. Motion passes. Agenda item 6B, discussion and possible action by resolution of the United Independent School Districts Board of Trustees to nominate candidates for the Webb County Appraisal District's Board of Directors as per section 6.5. 03 and 6.0301 of the Texas Tax Code. Uh, yes, Madam Chair and members of the board, the recommendation is that the nominees <coughs> are uh, nominees to the WebCat Board of Directors in accordance with the statute are uh, Mr. Ramiro Velis, Ms. Alisa Oliveros, Mr. Frank Castillo, Mr. Rick Rodriguez, and Mr. Uh, Gilbert Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any against? None heard. Motion passes. Agenda item 7, we have adjournment. Move. Move. Second. 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 All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And I will excuse myself from the board workshop. I have a personal matter that I need to attend to. Thank you very much. We're going to take five-minute rest. Recess, right?